best monetized platforms to can you describe to me what this thing called Instagram is? I've heard about it, but I've never used it. And so that's the wonderful thing and also the challenging thing for us uh, guest speaker this morning. Wendy is one of New Zealand's leading uh, experts and practitioners in the field of social management. Her business Socialites works with a number of incredible New Zealand businesses uh, from established companies such as Spark right the way through to startups and entrepreneurs looking to bring a business to its fruition. Wendy's launched a business platform that she'll talk a little bit about this morning that is designed to give you the toolboxes to move from I haven't tried it before to a safe and easy way to get the most out of your social media. Incredibly well recognized, well, well um, cover coveted and reported and through the media. I'm sure you'll enjoy the session with Wendy this morning. So without further ado, welcome to Wendy. Hi guys. <laughs> Fans. It's always great to have a fan. Um, so, well, first of all, thank you so much for coming along today. I'm really passionate about helping New Zealand businesses learn about social media, so hopefully I can answer all your questions. And um, what I thought we'd do is, the ones that I've done so far in Tauranga and Hamilton, had a whole lot of questions come through beforehand, and I kind of went through them in order. Didn't have so many from you guys, so what I've kind of done is taken the most popular ones and put a bit of an agenda together for us, and what I thought we'd do has worked through that. I've looked at what sort of businesses are here, so I've kind of really focused on ones I think will work for you guys. And then, but at any stage, do feel free to like pop up your hand if you've got a question. And then there's heaps of time for questions at the end. So does that sound good? Yep. Okay. Just let's get into it. If I can flick, Brendan, where am I clicking? That way. I. Who would have guessed that? That was great. Oh. So a little bit about me, as um as Simon said, I am. From the world of Mad Men, I grew up in advertising. I absolutely loved marketing from when I was a really small child, as in like when the other kids were doing sports and music, I was recutting out adverts and making them look prettier. Yeah, my mum thought I was weird, but luckily there's a career in that, and that's called advertising. So I worked in ad agencies for years and years and years, and then about six years ago, I kind of completely accidentally came across social media, helping my husband with his um, small business and and. Uh, which was a physio practice, and I just got super excited about it. I was like, this is how people are going to, um, like, it's going to change how we communicate with each other. And I do think that has happened, not just with businesses, but with people. If you look at, you know, the um, Ice Bucket Challenge or, um, you know, things trending on Twitter, you know, if you look at the stuff page, often, like, the first six articles are all about something that's happened on social media. So, and then there's the Kardashians, but we're not going to talk about them today because that's just painful. Um, so yeah, I've, this is a few of my team, which are amazing. Flo, very important part of the team. She's adorable. Um, and then, yeah, Start Social is the company that I started earlier this year, which I launched actually at Spark Labs um, Startup Month, which helps smaller New Zealand businesses with social media. So hopefully I've got some bits out of that to help you today. <laughs> I love doing this. So, so a little bit of an agenda. Um, I thought I'd go through key platforms. A few new things happening on Instagram and Facebook. I've chosen those ones because there seem to be a lot of businesses here that should be using those platforms. Um, there's some really cool little tips and tricks there. Um, how to choose a platform, like which platform you should be on. Um, some targeting stuff, really important to do targeting nowadays. I was thinking back when I started six years ago, like there was no targeting, there was no advertising. You just like put stuff up and like everyone would see it and it was amazing. But Apparently Facebook needed to make money, so that's all changed. Um, ideas of what to post and some kind of tips to get some organic reach so you don't have to pay for everything, always handy. Um, some tools, some little platforms that you guys can take a screenshot of. I'll put this up in our group later on. Um, and then just a little bit about what's happening in the future. And then we'll open up to questions. Uh, wrong way. Okay, so basically this is my slide that says social media is not going anywhere, it's just going crazy. But you're all here today, so we can just flip through that one. Probably the biggest one is, um, is, is Facebook. Uh, social media users in general, it's something like 3 billion people are on social media around the world. Um, Facebook is up around the 1.5 billion. Twitter's kind of around the 230 mil. Snapchat's actually around 200 mil, which is really high. Um, the one to watch and Instagram it's at 400 mil but it's rising really fast just in the last this is a, 2015 it's gone up to I think it's gone up to about 800 mil in the last year so it's really big um, I don't know has anyone seen the slide before the internet minute one 
It's so cool. It just makes you freak out a little bit. But basically, you know, over 700,000 Facebook posts every internet minute is going up there. Um, you've got 527,000 Snapchat photos being shared around the world. Instagram, 38,000 posts, even on, even on Tinder. Anyone on Tinder? Anyone? You know, you've got almost, almost yeah, 972 million swipes left or swipe right. Please swipe the right way for me. That would be great. Um, so just as a, base, as a basic, Facebook in New Zealand, we've got 2.4 million active users in New Zealand. Um, four or five times more people are on Facebook every day than are watching TV. So if you're looking at your marketing budgets, people, that's how I go into my CEO level meetings. I'm like, so. Um, what else with Facebook? It's, it's really great because you can target very specifically. It's probably one of the favorite things that I like about it. So you might have, you might have an audience that are 50 plus, but you can just target people who are 50 plus on Facebook. You don't need to target everybody else who's following you. It's one, one of the great things. Instagram, there's just over a million people in Instagram in New Zealand. What's really interesting is in Australia, the ratios are reversed. So there's two thirds, well, there's two thirds of people are on Instagram compared to one third on Facebook. But in New Zealand, we're the other way around. Um, which to me says, well, I hate to say it, but we are probably going to follow Australia in this trend. Awful, but it's kind of the worldwide trend. So more people are going to go onto Instagram than are on Facebook. And I don't know if anyone's got kids, but I've got a ten-year-old, and like they're all on, they're on Instagram but they're not on Facebook. Well, they're not legally allowed to, but also that's where they're doing all their messaging. So I think you're going to see a real trend in Instagram over the next couple of years. Snapchat. Wendy, there's already a question on oh, of course. why is that? I think, I think what happened is, it actually comes back to Twitter, which is, I know, ironic. But what happened was Twitter was really well established internationally about sort of 10 years ago, and it took ages to come to New Zealand. And just when Twitter hit New Zealand, which was more of a messaging platform, Facebook bought out Facebook messaging. So there's a few early adopters that were on Twitter, but not a lot, like not mass market, not every New Zealander, like they are in the States and in Europe. So because we didn't, we were like, why would you go on Twitter when we can like just message, which was the main cool thing about Twitter, on Facebook. New Zealanders have this real love affair with Facebook and they've got really used to it and they use it for everything. So when you bought on Instagram, we like it, but we use it in quite a different way. The other thing, so it's kind of this historical, also Instagram is really um, used a lot by like influencers, so people who post those beautiful yoga photos or um, inspiring fitness people or um, just kind of the, 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 the people that, like your celebrities I suppose really. And in New Zealand we don't have a massive celebrity culture compared to other countries, I think we can all agree. Apart from my fan here, thanks, Jono. Um, but, but we don't really have that sort of celebrity culture that other countries do, so we're not as um, we don't follow people as much as, as they do. So that, we're kind of more about our friends and family here. But that's changing with the new generations coming through. If that makes sense. Um, yeah, Snapchat in New Zealand, we don't hear a lot about it, but it's really, really big. There's six hundred to eight hundred thousand Kiwis who are actively on Snapchat every single day, which is really big. It's quite fun. But what's um, Entrepreneur on Fire, for example, that follow is always just like, nah, I only use Snapchat now. Uh, yes. There's a few people saying that. That they just love Snapchat? Yeah, the Snapchat Live or whatever. I think it depends where your audience, well, it all comes down to where your audience is. So if you are, you know, like I love Snapchat because it's, as you say, it's live, but then you've got Facebook Live. Yeah. <laughs> and, then you, and then you've got Instagram Stories. Whereas Snapchat stories. So what's happening is Facebook and Instagram and all the other platforms are taking the best bits out of each other, applying it to their own platforms, um, which is really kind of kind of quite cool. So I think it's really important as a business owner or and as a general person who wants wants to connect with your community to know where your people are. Um, I'm really big on like, if right this second, all the people that you want to talk to are on Snapchat. You need to be on Snapchat. If they're off there next month, get off get off Snapchat. Get onto something else. And there's kind of an example of, like, in the old days when you're booking, like, TV sponsorships, you'd be like, right, I want to, like, book the block because everyone's watching the block or The Bachelor. But you don't worry about whether that's going to be the popular thing next year. You just you put that sponsorship money into it now, um, and you don't worry about what's going to happen in the future. So you've got to know where your people are right now. If they're on Snapchat, go for it. So, yes? yeah, how Sorry. you actually put your fingers on those pops, on that pops? You've got to get in there with your community and know where they are and talk to them. 
it's no easy way, but I like talking's amazing. And if it's, like, it's, I know it's incredible. And just actually asking them, like, where are you guys? Where do you hang out? Test a few things. Narelle? Um, so, saying about being in the choosing your right platform for where your customers are, is there a lot of use or benefit out of doing that repost through? So, say if you put like an Instagram thing, yep. sharing it on Facebook as well, or like intermingling them, or is it better just to keep them as different posts? Um, I think it, it depends. If you've got heaps of time, then it's quite nice to, well, it's ideal that you ha you create posts for each platform because they are all slightly different. What I would say, if you're a small business owner and you don't have a lot of time, like use the repost, like, you know, use, your, um, link your accounts, post to the same thing. And that's better than nothing, personally. Like you've got to look at your resource, where's your time best spent? If that makes sense, it's real practical. Um, yep, then LinkedIn, we've got over, I think, 1.3 million users. Great if you're a B2B business or looking for a job, but it's not just about looking for a job, people. In other words, none of my staff are allowed on it. Just kidding. Um, Twitter, they say there's about 300,000 people on Twitter in New Zealand. I'm not so sure. Um, but there is all the politicians, all your celebrities, and if you've got a global, com global New Zealand company, it's really important because Twitter is, is having a massive resurgence in Europe recently, and it's oh, just so big in the States. So if, you've got, if you want to be talking to or influencing politicians, then it's great to be on on Twitter. Simon? One of the questions has come up saying, how do you establish a brand on a platform like Snapchat, which feels like it's such a personal network? Any tips on how a brand might embark on that journey? Well, actually, probably looking at Spark's um, channel is not a bad idea. Um, what you need to do is you need to go, why? We've got to go, why are you on this platform? Like, what's the point of it? Snapchat, I find really great as a kind of behind the scenes platform. So if you're doing a... Um, you know, if you're a fashion fashion retailer or a fashion designer, like having the like, oh, we've just got doing those little snap stories of here's the latest um, fabrics that we've just got in. We really look, here's our little behind the scenes modelling shoot. That sort of stuff works really, really beautifully on Snapchat. Um, and it's just a matter of using your other communication points to tell people about it because they're not going to stumble across your Snapchat account. You actually need to tell them to find it. Um, you can do that through your email, you can do it in store, you can do it through your Facebook account, your, you know, what, what, however, or you know, write it in the sky if you need to. But you've got to tell people that it's there with Snapchat because they're not going to find it because there's no advertising on Snapchat at the moment. Um, and then there's Yelp internationally, I think there's 450 million users, which is kind of like a finding all the nice restaurants and bars and cafes around the world, really handy for travelling. TripAdvisor, I think it's about 500,000 as well, um, which is people reviewing uh, tourism destinations and accommodation around the world. Incredible. Really handy if you're in hospitality or tourism. Not really relevant if you're not. Um, and then Pinterest is 100 million users, which is having a bit of a revival, so one to watch if you're in certain industries. Um, what I would say here, though, is do one or two things really well. I'm giving you an overview of everything, but just do what is good for you. So a couple of new things that have just happened on Facebook and Instagram, which is just handy for who's on who's got their business on Facebook? Fantastic. So you'll find this really useful. Instagram? Yes, I picked it. I looked at everyone's businesses and I was like, I'm pretty sure you guys are on these ones. Um, but at interest, any of you guys on Snapchat? Using Snapchat? Fantastic. How about personally on Snapchat? See? That's really interesting, eh? Like we're all on it personally. And do you guys who follows brands on Snapchats? Just a few. Some good ones, like Crone is quite good. Obviously Spark's pretty good. I've got to say that. Um, oh, and um, there's, oh, I think it's Paramount Pictures, quite good as well. So well, we'll do some tips for Facebook and Instagram now. Um, one really cool thing to do is to set up instant replies, which is like setting up your out of office when you're on Facebook. So if someone, because what we're finding with people is they're going to Facebook almost like they go to a website to go, hey, we just want to ask you a quick question. And um, if you go into your settings, under settings, messaging, response assist, they launched this earlier this year, you can basically set up an out of office going, hey guys, we're away from our phones at the moment, but we're going to be back at five o'clock to answer any questions, and here's some FAQs of things that people always ask us. Great thing is you can personalise it now, so if I ask, it'll come back and go, hey Wendy, thanks for your message, we've got five o'clock to answer any questions. 
which is kind of cool. And you can actually schedule in what time you want it to be on, which is really cool. The other thing I'd highly recommend for everybody is, if you haven't already, is to use um, Facebook pages and download the Facebook pages. Has everyone got that one on their phone? Cool. It stops you like mixing up your personal from your pages, which like I've got horror stories from five years ago before they launched that app. This is going to sound like a good question now, but um, I see heaps of stuff on my personal feed that I want to notch over and chuck onto pages. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, it's, it's not bloody easy. I, I, on Android, but maybe it's just me being a squid, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, I th maybe you, want, you see someone else's post so, that you want so to I can't use. find an page. easy way to uh, like save a post from a Facebook feed and then post it as the business. That's like I have to literally go to my computer and go, you are. What, you can, and, what you can do is under Facebook pages, you can follow other businesses and then that'll put it into a stream and then in that stream on Facebook pages you can share as your business. I could, I'll show you later but it's, it, it is possible. Um, the other great thing on Instagram, so you guys, who's on Instagram, have you set up your business profile yet? You done it? It's really easy, you literally like go into settings and you follow those steps on there, which I'll put up into our Facebook group later, but it's really, really well worth doing. Probably biggest thing is you can then get insights and find out how well your posts are performing, it's so cool. Um, which is here, and I, Brendan, do you want to show that, put the video? Who's looked at their Facebook, their Instagram insights yet? It's pretty cool. It just kind of shows, that this is a little bit of a gift that I made, prepared earlier. I feel like I'm Alison Holst. But anyway, um, yeah, it's like how many clicks to your website, uh, demographics of people, which, one, which posts are working well, which aren't, all the information that you need to just keep an eye on things. The best thing is, is if you've started working with, like if you know how you get like bloggers or influencers calling you and going, hey, can I, can I do a deal with you? And you're not sure if their three million followers are from India or from New Zealand, you can ask to see their Instagram insights and that'll tell you. So it's a really nice way just to check that when an um, influencer comes to you that things are hunky-dory, because you can see them all on here. So you're yeah, well worth looking at Instagram insights. Um, you can repost things from which worked really well last time, repost them again in a few months, that sort of stuff. Save you a lot of time, and it's just cool. Have I got through it all? I think so. Oh, uh, the other great thing is Instagram Stories, and for all of you on Snapchat, you know about Snapchat Stories. So Instagram, we're like, that's a great idea. So we'll we'll take that, and um, you can now do Instagram Stories, which is basically putting up a list, like several posts at once, into a story, and it comes up the top, up top right there. So you've got National Geographic, A Channel, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which is really well worth doing. If you want to kind of create a story about your day, or a story, and it's a 24 hour thing as well, just like Snapchat. So it's a story of what's been happening in your business. I'm, it's going to be interesting. As I said, right now Snapchat's really big, but these are some big changes happening, and it might, might move people off Snapchat into Instagram more, so watch the space. Um, oh, great life hack for people that like to schedule things in advance, which I highly recommend, is, um, you can use the drafts functionality that's just been launched on Instagram a few weeks ago to do this. And all you need to do is get your poster ready to go, and then if you click discard, it actually says um, save draft. It gives you that option now. And that means you can kind of have your posts all scheduled up, ready to go, and when you're ready, just in the morning, go click, go, click, go, but without having to craft them all. So you could get like 10 or 20 posts sitting in drafts, ready to go. Yep. Funnily enough, found that the other day, yeah. did it, because I actually didn't want to do it just then because I'd already done one. Perfect. But I went, oh, yes. but I couldn't find it on my phone, so when I went in the next day to... Oh, if you go to mind. do a post again, it should be just sitting just underneath. Like, if you go into, like, I'll, sh I'll show you later. But it's, um, literally when you go to do your, like, go to do a post, um, it'll sit there with your drafts just sitting as the, as the top layer. It does look just like another photo, so you've got to... Kind of be aware of it. Um, I keep getting ones accidentally, which is kind of fun. Now I've put together this in terms of probably my order of if what sort of business type you've got. This is very generic, but it gives you a good start of what platforms you should be on. So I think I've covered everyone in here, but it, does anyone have any questions about what platforms they should be focusing on in regards to your business? Because I'm here to answer them. Which is kind of fun. But it's all pretty self explanatory, really. You know, you've got um, B2B, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, fashion, Instagram, um, retail, Facebook and Instagram, non trades, Facebook's really big. 
um, hospitality, that's when you've got to get onto your, you know, Yelp sort of ones as well. Really important. Tourism, TripAdvisor, um, services, Facebook and Instagram. As you'll see, there's a lot of Facebook and Instagram, but we're in New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. Just touch on briefly how best to use Pinterest. Yeah. Um, well, the great thing is, like, I think later in the year, but they did say that last year, you got to be able to, like, purchase through Pinterest. But what I find the best thing in terms of Pinterest personally is you create, board, like, say if you're in travel, you create inspirational boards. But if you're in more of the services one, you can actually create, like, little almost, like, infographics. And they work really well because people just start sharing and you link them back to your um, a relevant place on your blog or your website. And those little infographics just seem to work so well on Pinterest in terms of, for most businesses, in terms of a thought leadership position. The only problem with Pinterest is it's so global, it's, you know, and it's really, you can't really target. So that's where it's tricky. Um, but if you've got a global New Zealand company or you've got the time um, or you just want to and keep everything in one place, it's really great. And I think it's one of those ones that's going to develop. It's really going to be one of those ones that, I, I hope so anyway, I spend way too much time on this. It's like, and here's my perfect children, and here's my perfect house. I wish I had my perfect children and my perfect house. But anyway. Um, right. Of course. That's true. Yeah. Um, this is a tricky one. So I work for a target technique, I do our social media. Yeah. Um, so we have our main channel that represents the organisation, yeah. but we also have, uh, uh, we offer a lot of uh, courses and qualifications that pretty much cover all of those things there, so we've got beauty and health and fitness and trades. Um, they're, all, they're all keen to get on social media, but mm -hmm. they don't have the resources um, to manage their own channels. Right, and we so you sort of do it for them? In a way, but it's too much for one channel to handle, because we offer so much. So well, we're kind of keen for you know, the fashion yeah. school to get on. Their own channels. The other, they don't have the resources to manage them. Mm -hmm. so. what's, what's sort of happening as a trend, to be honest, is you actually have Otago Polytech, one brand, but you use targeting to target the different audiences, which actually fits perfectly into our next slide. So you'd actually still do fashion under Otago, but you'd only be talking to people who you know are interested in fashion. That's how you do it. So you actually have all going through you guys, and then you have a big, beautiful calendar, and it's like, right, it's your turn. Where's your $100 to put behind a post? What I find with um, big organisations, tip for big corporates is like, like if you have to put some money behind paid advertising, you actually so you actually get really beautiful um, content through. Just works in corporates, trust me. Um, so, that, but I would actually try and, to be honest, I'd try and keep it in one and then just target. It's actually because you want to look at your overall brand and that's kind of the power. And then the fashion show and stuff underneath kind of comes through. Uh, you'd actually just add a hashtag and then you have fashion school, design school, whatever, and then you just follow that stream along. Yeah. So yeah. you create, we'll create your own as well. Um, yeah, that would work on Instagram. Some of them are really pushing to get their own channels and they, you know, they can pump out quite a bit of content that is really relevant for people that are interested in fashion. So I see value in, in having their own one, um, but it's just getting you really aligned with the... Um, I mean, if it's big enough to have everyone following it, but it depends what your, your objective is. Like, are you trying, like, is it acquisition in terms of getting new students? Because once you've got them, you've kind of got them. You don't really, but then you've got, you know, building communities around those particular um, industries. And then you've got thought leadership as well. So in the thought leadership, you really want to be sort of all over LinkedIn. And you've probably got, like, um, post, post courses as well. So you kind of need to be in different areas depending on where your community is, does that make sense? And like fashion, to be honest, I'd probably get them having, because they say, hey look, don't worry about Facebook, let's get you guys a Snapchat channel. And it's all behind the scenes fashion, because that is kind of where the fashion people are. They love that stuff. Whereas on our Instagram, yeah. It really is. We are the people. We are the people, and then chasing them. Been in, been in with them, in the, in the trenches. Wendy, slightly related question. Any tips for individuals to promote themselves and the company they sell for if they can't have a company page? Yeah, I think, I think it's really important to have a strong personal brand in general. Um, it's almost quite fun to do a little, it's a bit of marketing, marketing you speak, but almost like do a bit of a, like a brand analysis of how you want to be, or of who you are. So go, okay, what are your, what will, what will you and won't you post? Like, 
for me, for example, my Instagram is all like my kids and things like that. But all my public Facebook stuff tends to be all my work related things. So just have some guidelines on what you will and won't post across each channel to build your brand. I think it's really important. Is, is that enough of a help on that one? Um, yeah, I think so. Any other people, anyone else like to add to that one? It's kind of quite, you know, like you follow some people and they're like, really cool. Trent's great. <laughs> Um, importance of targeting. So some of your options. Coolest thing about social media nowadays, and one thing we did not have six years ago, is you can target most people really specifically. So when you are doing paid media spend and putting some money into it, um, you can make sure you're talking to the right people at the right time. I don't know if most people realise, but Facebook, which was 100% organic reach six years ago, then went to 30 to 16, it's now sitting at about 1% to 2%. Um, of every post you put out there. So if you've got 100 fans on your Facebook page, only two or three of them, are, if you're lucky, are actually going to see that post. So it's really important to start thinking now and getting yourself trained up in targeting. So when you do put $10 behind a post, it goes to the right people. And there's some really cool ways you can do it. There's the old marketing demographics, um, there's the interests, all that sort of stuff. But there's actually kind of cool things now, and I think I've got some slides in here, about going, what's your post objective? Like, are you trying to drive people through to your website or your blog, or are you trying to get a conversation going with engagement? And when you go through Facebook or Instagram, it actually lets you choose who you want to target based by what you're trying to get them to do. Kind of weird, but what they do is they go, okay, these sort of people really love commenting and having conversations on post, and they fit your criteria. So we're going to show it to them first before we show it to the people who are less likely. It's kind of cool. Um, I think I've got a slide on that. The other thing that's really important to do, if you haven't already, is to put a pixel on your website so you can do remarketing, which means that anyone that comes to their website, you can kind of like stalk them around the internet for a while, which works really, really well. And I'm sure you've all been to a shoe shop or something like that and um, on the online, and then like those shoes just keep following you until you buy them. Yep. You can do that with your company too. It works really well. So, when you're just to that point, because a couple yeah. of questions asking similar things, there was an original thought that social media was great because it was free, it was really cheap. That was great. <laughs> just to, just to com have with complete clarity, is there any effectiveness now on unpaid posting? Yes, there is. Um, it's just not as easy as it was. I've got some tips later on, actually, of ways you can get unpaid posting out there for free and get some good reach and traffic, but it's not easy. It's not a matter of just going, here's a picture of the lunch in my restaurant, put it up, and everyone's going to see it. You've just got to be aware of it. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if in the next year or two it actually goes down to you put that picture up and no one will see it, just like radio or TV. Like, there's no point in making a radio ad and not putting it on radio or making a TV ad and showing it at 2 a.m., unless you're speaking to new mothers or something. The concept behind that is a paid or how does that actually work? Oh, I'll, I'll talk through it first, actually. So what it, what it is with Pixels, it's a little piece of code put on your website, and once after that, you can go into Facebook, and when you're setting up a ad or wanting to put some paid spend behind it, you can target people that have been to your website in the last 30 days, 5 days, 1 day. Does that make sense? Like the 1 day one's quite good, so if you know that they've been there, um, then you can retarget them. The great thing as well is you can exclude people so you can go we want to target everyone who's been to our website but not the people that have actually bought from us because that's a waste of money it's pretty cool and you can do this across Google as well Google and Facebook and Instagram so yeah it's well worth doing I've actually got a slide I thought it was the next one but it must be up a couple which shows where to find it and the other really important cool thing to know about um, Facebook and Instagram advertising are these things called lookalike audiences. Has anyone heard of those? Yeah, a little bit. They're really amazing. So along with um, the re remarketing, like people that have already been to your website, lookalike audiences we always find in my company have like 10 times more conversion rates and effectiveness than any other audiences that we, we target. So what Facebook does, it's really cool and I wish, I wish that all of the social media platforms would do it and I bet they'll get there, but they go, okay, here's 100 people who we know are amazing customers, and these guys buy from us, and they spend lots of money. And what we do is we give that information to Facebook, but anyway, it's another story, give that face, uh, information to Facebook, upload it, and Facebook goes, great, that's that 100 people, here's another 1,000 people who behave the same way, 
as these guys do. They look the same, they're kind of the same, they go to the same sort of websites, so why don't you target them? And honestly, it works really, really well compared to every other um, targeting. That I was going to set up on that probably three months ago, I think, and I sat down and I went, am I the right target for this? slash Digital Communications Act, if I go, Great question. I know you'll be a good customer, put your numbers in there. Yeah, it's a really good question. You can't just, like if you've got a, just a normal email list, you need to have um, your company somewhere or in your website when people sign up that you have permission to market them outside of email. Because basically, and it, most website, pretty much every single website you go to which has a normal website policy will cover that, but do check it. You can't just collect emails at a function like this in a glass bowl and then put all the email addresses into Facebook. That's not okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. But again, is it specific? I'm having uh, I mean, to bring up these customers and say, hey, I'd really like to put your psycho-personal details on Facebook and have it retarget. Well, all you're doing is putting in their email addresses yeah. to start with. But, um, and the great thing is Facebook only will know them if that's the email address they use to log into Facebook. Um, if they use a work versus personal, you won't find them. But we just did a really interesting piece of work. We were trying to target um, kind of high-level CEOs and CFOs, and like, none of them use their um, work email address to log into Facebook. Funny that. So that just completely failed, but that was fun. Social media keeps me in a job. Um, it keeps changing. So, yeah, it's kind of, I think the privacy thing is a really important one. It's just to make sure we've got permission to retarget. But if you use Google AdWords, it's exactly the same thing. Um, Facebook and Google are really serious about privacy, like they have to be. So they do take it very, um, very seriously. So I think I feel quite safe with with that because they're kind of the biggest companies in the world. So if they screw up, they're going to have major problems. Um, so look like audiences, really well worth doing and easy to find. Um, cool. So one cool. So, the, so creating custom audiences. This is where you find it. So there's a little button and when you go to make an um, ads manager, business manager, and it just says create custom audiences. And it's so cool because you can either upload that custom file, this is where you do that, that's your, your Excel spreadsheet of everybody, the email addresses, or website traffic, which is your pixel. Um, app activity, if you happen to have a, an app. And this new thing is really cool. It's engagement on Facebook. And I'll sort of show you one of these. So basically it's like, okay, We've, run, we've had a video on Facebook before. We want to target everyone who's watched that video with, with something, which is pretty cool because if you did a really interesting video about one of your products and you kind of want to retarget them with a, like, here's a video of how this product works really, really well. It's super cool. It's a hoverboarding skateboard from 1962. And then you can, like, follow them up with it and you should buy it. Ding. But you already know that they know what it is and they're really warmed up to the... Um, to the product. So in marketing we kind of have this awareness information conversion funnel. And you want to have as many people at the top doing awareness, doing with something really cool and engaging. Then you want to hit them with that information, like hey, um, this is why it's so cool. And then right at the end that conversion of like, and you should buy it now. And you'll see this in marketing every day. This and uh, these tools on Facebook enable you to do it really easily. So if you make a cool little video or cool little post, you can retarget everyone who looked at that with a really sharp offer. Has to be your video. I know. Wouldn't it be great? <laughs> be like, and someone at Bunnings is like, and everyone looks at that Mitre 10 video. But yeah, that, we're not allowed to do that. Otherwise, yeah, Spark will be like, and yeah. <laughs> um, okay. And the cool thing about videos and why I'm quite into them is um, you can actually look at how engaged they were in the video. So there's the three seconds, 10 seconds, at least 25%, at least 50%. And we did this really cool campaign um, I was talking about last night. And it was a two, two minute, 13 second video, because I love that on Facebook you can make videos at any length. But we didn't actually introduce the brand until a minute in. So we targeted people who'd seen at least a minute of the video because then they knew who we were kind of thing. So it just made it a really effective um, use of media. Does that all make sense? Kind of cool. So the more the more you go down, the more highly engaged they are, the more likely they are to purchase or engage or click whatever you want them to do. Um, this is where you find the pixels for retargeting. And I will put these slides up in our Facebook group so you guys can grab them later. Or do my, I always just take photos of slides. It's life hack. <laughs> 
as my daughter would say. Um, yeah, click tools, create a pixel, copy the code, give it to your developer if you're not techie, or do it yourself if you are. Right, I thought I'd talk a little bit about content. Content is king, we're targeting as queen. Um, rule number one, quality, 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 quality. We used to be post four times a day, la 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 la, get things from Viral Hub and put them in your post and do all of that. Don't do that. Just don't. Stop it. There's, um, if we go back to that video, that, that wheel that I showed right at the beginning, we are being bombarded with content right now. There is so much stuff just going on our screens. Kiwis spend about two hours a day, the average, on our phones. <laughs> I probably spend more. Um, and half of that is on Facebook or Instagram, which is crazy. So we are just like scrolling, 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 oh, scrolling, scrolling. Um, Snapchat for me today. So it's really important that you get something that's just eye-catching and just draws you in in that first couple of seconds. Faces work really well. Start, start with a face. People will spend more time on faces than they do even on um, beautiful scenery. So if you can start your piece of contact with faces and people, it's... Um, there's probably a whole lot of really interesting studies done, but I reckon it's just because when you're a baby, like you look at faces and you just like look at people's faces. Um, number two, stay true to your brand. And this is my dolphin story. So I was sitting there one time t telling people, don't put photos of dolphins up because if you, you know, if you're d if you're <laughs> dolphins are cute, everyone will engage with it, they love it. But if you're, you know, trying to sell heavy media machinery, that's just completely a waste of money and time. And then I had someone go, but I'm a paddleboarding company. I'm like, okay, you can do dolphin. <laughs> so, you know, look for stuff that like works with your brand. Um, those viral ones where you just grab something out just to get people talking, really aren't that best idea. You need it to relate to what your um, customers are looking for, who you are, what you want to, what messages you want to put across. But it also has to be really good, refer to point one quality. Um, number three, the conversation you want to evoke, which ties in with. Rule number four. So often I see, and we're, it's so easy to do. You like you want people to like have a con like comment below. You want them to like share it. You want them to click through. But it's just too confusing. You want to just okay. I want people to just do one thing. So when you're writing your post, think: Do you want them to click through, or do you want them to talk to you underneath in the comments? And don't ask them to do two things because it's just impossible. Unless you're doing a competition, which we'll get to later. But um. Something really simple. Something simple, one point. So I've got a couple of organic reach hacks for you, because you know, we're not all made of money. Um, even though social media advertising is some of the cheapest advertising you'll get in the entire world, but it still does cost money. So quick and easy, comment to wins. This is um, Celine, who, who works with us, and she does these three or four times a, w a year. Incredible um, return on investment. So she'll do a little competition. But this one, for example, with her dresses, one on the left, one on the right, which one would you like? Um, and you're in the draw to win it, entries close. Real simple. What happens is everyone puts their A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. This bumps it up Facebook algorithm, so it gets massive organic reach because everyone is liking it, so they bump it up in the things. Um, and she gets a whole lot of conversations going, which is great. And she'll cost her a dress, which might be a couple of hundred, two or three hundred dollars. But she always gets sales off these. It just works. Number two, and I love this one, because I think New Zealanders sh should be really good at this, because we like each other, which is nice. And that's collaboration. Um, for example, this is a great one, because these, these little businesses, you've got a nail salon, a, um, yeah, a nail salon, a hair salon, and a restaurant, all next to each other in Takapuna. And they got together and they're like, hey, I've got a thousand fans, I've got a thousand fans, I've got a thousand fans. Different communities, all very local. And they're like, let's do a competition together where we all put out on our social media platforms and put a prize together. And what happened is you're not just talking to your thousand, you're talking to the other two or three thousand people. Um, so working together is really great. And you can do that across industries as well. Like if you're a, if you're a you know, wedding photographer, you can work with a wedding um, bouquet florist person, sorry, words, bouquet florist, what, oh, Wendy, anyway, um, you can work with a florist, you can work with a, you know, cake designer, so kind of think about who in your industry you can collaborate with, because there's often people you can, like, collaborate with, like, even I was thinking, like, with the university, you know, you've got the public transport, you know, you can just do collaborations with, where are your people, all comes back to communities, 
you look like you've got a question. Yeah. Do you um, think it's a good idea to use third party apps for competitions, or is that sort of gone hard? Um, not you can you use them if you want to collect email addresses. Definitely. Reason that you would now? Yeah, it probably is. It's really great because Facebook's kind of loosened up all their rules. You get better organic reach just using Facebook or Instagram. Third party apps, though, if you want to collect any other data, or actually any data really. Um, so if you want to collect email addresses or some facts about them, male, female, demographics, where they live, you need to use an app. And they're great for that because sometimes you really, if you're trying to build a database, it's worth doing. Um, and there's some really cheap ones like Woobox, which are pretty much free. You know, you don't need to spend a lot of money. Great. Um, number three, and this is getting people to tag in their friends. Now, on Facebook, you're not allowed to say tag in your friends, but you can kind of infer that they should tag in their friends, and it always works. So what you do is, here's an example of a gym. Who's your gym buddy? Let us know, and you're both in draw to win a free month membership. What happens is everyone... Great thing is you'll start to type someone's name and it turns into their tag. Handy. Um, so basically what you can do there is they get a notification they've been tagged in a post, they come there, they see what you're doing, and you kind of get this nice reach, which is really great. Instagram, best thing about Instagram, and I encourage everyone on Instagram to do this straight away, is run a competition because there are no tagging rules. So you can say... Tag five friends below to get five entries into the draw. And that's okay on Instagram. Um, there's companies like Superette, and they'll have like thousands and thousands of comments each time they do one of these. And it might cost them a hundred bucks. So Instagram is really well worth doing. For a while, I'm not sure what it currently is, it always changes. <laughs> Facebook was um, lowering your organic reach if you wrote win, draw, or anything like that. Yep. Is that not the case now? Like even like scanning photos, they had OCR stuff that was looking at stuff and, and bringing it down. Is that true right now, do you know? I haven't noticed it. Um, we always see it go up. But I think it's more, I suppose it's so low anyway, if you're going from 1% to 2%. <laughs> I think the competition will bring it over that 1% to 2% anyway. Like, you. You've got to say it's a competition. You could put the name win in your... I always like to have it in the photo as well, personally. I like to double bang it in, make it real obvious. I think that's a ratio they use, because I put a photo up the other week for a competition that had yeah. a lot of words on it, and it came back and said to me, this will um, you know, have really low reach because of the um, ratio of words, and it gave some examples of what you need to do. So that example where you've just got the one word, like, sweet, that would work fine, but the more details you have about the competition on the image yeah, yeah that's almost a completely different issue so facebook used to have a, a like literally a rule where if you had more than 20 percent text on your image they wouldn't actually publish it they'd be like nah you're not allowed to have that on there uh they got rid of that rule and they have guidelines so they they just say look you're probably not going to get much reach if you have this and they have the filters going through which is great because it makes life a bit easier which is cool so yeah using friends good hack instagram Tell people to tag, tell people to share, tell people to just go crazy. But with Instagram, um, it's not as viral when you tag, right? Because I don't know about how people use Instagram, but I never look at that page where I just use the main feed. Same so how do you, you get but you should get a little um, notification. You know you know how you get that no if you get tagged in, if your friend tags you in, you still get that notification. You just mean you're just gonna be telling that one friend, not like Facebook where it goes on your feed even if yeah, no, you're, and you're right, but people do tend to check where they've been tagged on Instagram. You know how you do check where your thing? Yeah, that's only one person. Yeah. So on Facebook, you see when your friend tags another friend, and if you're not the one tagged. Sometimes, not always. They only do something like three or four per day, and then they'll actually stop doing it. It's, yeah, they they Facebook's pretty interesting with the notification algorithms. I've been trying to hack them for years, but it's pretty much a, a learning process. But they, for example, if you're in a group, you'll notice that people, you might have like 50 people posting in that group, but you'll only get two or three notifications about people posting. They'll choose if your friends post, they'll give you a notification first. If by about midday you haven't had a couple of friends post, they'll then start to widen it to other people you don't know. It's really amazing. It's really super complicated and changes every day. <laughs> 
which friends stuff you see more of like sometimes I'll see that like my best friend I'll see all of her stuff yeah and then other friends who post stuff I don't see unless I go to their page yeah I think they 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 like to put stuff that you like up so that's the crazy physics major people who write these algorithms but the more you like someone or the more you interact with someone on Facebook the more you'll see interesting social element to that because if I'm going to use the Americans as an example because none of us are American I hope um, but you've got that like for example if you're a Trump supporter you're going to see a whole lot of stuff from Trump supporters in your feed right now if you're a Hillary supporter you're going to see a whole lot of Hillary supporter stuff in your feed right now and what's happening is the news is actually not very what's quite and it's not so much the news people doing it, it's your friends. They've actually had this really interesting we won't be biased with news debate, which I think is still going on. But if your friends are all posting pro stuff, that's what you're going to see. If You're not going to see any anti. So people aren't seeing an um, unbiased view, which is really interesting. Very interesting debates around that sort of stuff at the moment on social media. Right, so that's a good hack, just to get some organic reach. Here's um, some useful social media tools. I'm put startsocial.nz up the top because it's my favourite, because I made it, it's my baby. Um, basically it's really cool, it's an online platform where you can learn how to and show and how to use social media for small businesses, so if you've got any friends with small businesses or have one, check it out. Coolest thing about it is that there's actually like live chat, so if you ever get stuck you're literally talking to my team back at the office who, are, who really know their stuff and they'll be like able to personally advise you on what to do. Very cool. Um, Hootsuite's great for scheduling and managing social media accounts, same as Sprout Social. At Socialites we use Sprout Social to manage all the, and we have something like 40,000 conversations a month or something crazy, sometimes 100, it's nuts, works really well. Only put is good for scheduling Instagram in advance, though now you can use drafts, so it's kind of cool. Um, Canva, incredible app, and you can download it on your phone as well. Makes everything look beautiful if you're not a graphic designer and don't understand Photoshop or InDesign. Like you can put like words on there, filters, like it's pretty much impossible to make a bad post if you use Canva, it's great. And everything's the right specs, so you just go, I want to make a Facebook post, choose one of their images that they've got nicely, um, you're not ripping it off Google, it's actually being, you know, okay to use. Or one of your own photos, put your words on it, change the fonts, it's so good. Um, and then Ripple is this app, which is great for making kind of little animated videos. Have a play, I just recommend anyone, it's on Android and Apple, um, Ripple, it's, you can make little animated video -y things, and we are finding that videos are, are performing really well at the moment, which is cool. Ah, a little bit around the corner before we get into questions, some stuff coming up, Snapchat filters, for all you guys on Snapchat, you know how like you come on and I'm like, hey I'm in Dunedin, um, you're going to, businesses and people are going to be able to put Snapchat filters, so we can, we, we would have had one here for Spark Club here today, would have been like, hey, come along to Spark Club. They do, yes, and they, they're they doing it in Australia. It's so cool. Um, but basically, if you're a business, you can be, well, we could have been like, hey, come along here at 10.30 and listen to Wendy um, for the week before, which would have been pretty cool. Uh, yeah, and it's like starts from like 9 or $10 to do it. It's really, really cool. But it's not here yet. They said May. Now they're saying March next year. So, But it is around the corner. Really interesting. McDonald's, use it really well. Ironic, but anyway. Social media commerce is coming really soon. So the Asian platform has been using it for absolutely years and years and years. You can, you know, through um, WeChat, Weibo and things like that, you've been able to pay your power and your um, everything else for, for years on social media. But New Zealand, we're getting there, which is great. So you'll be able to buy stuff pretty soon here as well. Uh, you can overseas, people are buying airline tickets. They're using Autobots. It's basically become a customer service platform. They're going to own us. It's great. Um, but as a small business owner, it's amazing because you're going to be able to have set up these little bots going, hey, do you like that dress? Yes, that's great. How much is it? It's $12. Enter your address. <laughs> Click buy. And people are going to be able to do that through social media messaging um, probably within a few months, six months a year. Really, really, really around the corner. And then virtual and augmented reality. Did you talk about that one a bit this morning? Well, you guys are obviously all here, but it's amazing. Um, probably my favourite is, did you talk about this one? Oh, awesome. My, one of my favourite examples oh, favorite examples of this one is when eBay and Maya got together, Maya being that big 
um, department store in Australia. They got together with eBay, and they got like a Google Cardboard thing, and what you do is you get your phone, put it in the app, download the app, and it felt like you're walking through a Maya department store, and you just kind of like go through, walk through. You're like, oh, some nice dresses here, oh, some nice shoes here, etc. And then you can buy it, epic. For someone like me who hates shopping, you can just go in and have your personalised shopping experience in Maya. Remembers everything you've bought before, remembers what you like, um, hopefully your sizes, it only has stuff there that's like in your size. You can sort of see this developing out, as you can imagine. Um, one for the guys, Budweiser did this. You, you could buy a six pack of Bud, and then you cut out your Google Cardboard, put it on, download your app, and they'd done a sponsorship with a baseball game, I think, and you could like, watch the baseball game afterwards and have special commentary and things like that. So it's just interesting how businesses are using this virtual augment, augmented reality. Probably the most exciting thing for me as a marketer is the shopping part of it because if you think about your targeting, like if I put it on, it should know it's me and give me stuff that I want. Um, but then if someone, if my husband puts it on, it should only give him the stuff that he wants, which is kind of interesting. Or I really like the idea of because I really hate supermarkets. You can go to the supermarket, put it on, but then it, you could probably almost, you know, those, um, what are they called? Front shelving things, which companies sell. It's like, oh, here's all your Cadbury blocks of chocolate and here's your toilet roll. You could actually have those changing out depending on who you're talking to and who's actually going through the app and logged in. So I think we're in for some really interesting different ways of shopping and experiencing life in the next 10 years or so. So that's kind of where I see it going. Um, some takeouts, because I think that's what you're supposed to do in a presentation. Um, select your platforms based on where your community is, as we, as we talked about, which is great. Quality over quantity, always target thoughtfully. There's so many cool ways to do it, really learn how to do it. It's only going to get more, it's going to get simpler but yet more sophisticated, if that makes sense. It's going to be easy to do, but it's, you're going to be able to do it down to a more um, sophisticated level. Be genuine and listen to your people really important. I think the whole reason why I love social media so much is that you can actually talk to real people all the time and have those real conversations immediately. You can change your business depending on what everyone's saying. We had um, examples of my husband's business. We'd like no one turning up at Wednesday Pilates one day. And so we went on to Facebook and we're like, guys, do you hate us? And they're like, no, but there's a really good TV show. Can you change it to Thursday? So we did. So little simple things like that. Um, ongoing support go to startsocial.nz. And that's me for now. And I thought we could just open up to questions if we've got any more time. Yeah, there, there, are, there is time. There's a number Fantastic. that have come through. So, so one of the, the sort of common themes is around return on investment, mm. where originally social was great because it was free and it didn't cost much. Now it's starting to become more expensive, albeit not as expensive as other mediums. What's your recommendation on how to set up reporting on a monthly basis uh, to demonstrate return on investment? Um, I quite like to report almost as you go, to be honest. Um, so on Facebook, you can track conversion really easily if, you, if you've got online. So you can actually go into your dashboard, and it's actually real time. It's real time. It's always there. So you almost don't need to do monthly reporting. You can actually do daily, hourly, pretty much reporting. I think it's – I mean, as a small business, we all know you've got um, – if you're anything like me, I'd log into Xero every day and just check out my cash flow. I think it's the same thing with social media. You can actually log in and just see how it's going all the time. Um, if you're a bigger business and you've got to do like board packs and everything, just pull those key insights out um, from, I find the native ones actually the best at reporting. Didn't used to be, but Facebook's native insights are the best and so are Twitter's, LinkedIn's and Instagram's in terms of those ones. Snapchat's really hard because it's Snapchat. Hard to report on that one. Another question come through. Can you set up an Instagram business profile if you're not on Facebook? I don't. I don't know. I don't know anyone on Facebook. Who are these people? Um, <laughs> I actually don't know. I'll have to, I'd have to Google that. Can you? There we go. So, yes, you can. Yeah, you can. Answered by the crowd. Um, you haven't talked much today about YouTube. Any thoughts on where YouTube heads next and its effectiveness as a platform for, for people in the audience? For people. I mean, YouTube is, I personally think of it almost like a, like a library. Um, 
as in it's like you go there to find something specific and then you get sucked into this rabbit hole, as we all know. Um, I think it is, I think it's hard to use, I think anything, any videos you do in general, you should definitely replicate and put on YouTube. It's just a, an easy one, you should put it on there. Um, in terms of YouTube advertising, it's just like everything else, you can target pretty, pretty well. But I think its real value is in putting something on YouTube, um, but then also putting it on Facebook and Instagram, etc., etc. What has happened, and why we don't use YouTube as much as a key part of our strategy nowadays, is that you used to, about two years ago, Facebook changed. You used to like put something on YouTube, put the link in, and it uploaded it. But then you could upload native videos to Facebook and Instagram, so it just loaded straight in, which, and they'd start auto-playing. And when you get that auto-playing, the engagement is so much higher than it being stopped and you have to press play, um, which is why people are putting, uploading things directly into social media platforms instead of tagging back to YouTube. So YouTube's like a, it's almost like a hygiene factor, put it in there. But pushing to YouTube and from YouTube, I don't think so. It's not as good ROI as using the other platforms. It's probably the best. Return on investment, sorry. Try not to jargon. Any tips on how to raise your SEO through social? Search engine optimization through social. How to raise your search engine optimization. Um, I'm not an expert on search engine optimization, so hopefully this is right, because I was having a great conversation with someone at one of the last Spark Labs, and they were saying that you can link your Facebook um, and Instagram and social media platforms to SEO quite well. And it actually, and I suppose when you put something into Google, like as, as we know, often those platforms do come up first or second. But I'm not sure of the actual details, and I'd hate to say the wrong thing, so I'll probably stop there on that one. It's a real dark art. I just know social. My little bit. It's hard. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've probably got a couple more minutes if there are any other questions from, from the audience. Um, I just have a question about um, getting the right tone and voice for your brand on social and sort of how to keep that consistent. Um, have you got any tips for ways to do that? Yeah, I like to do a, um, when, you, when you do it through, do a we say this, not this. It's probably that it's a really kind of simple way to do it, but it's like going, okay, we say hey, not hi. We say wanna, not want to, like with the language is really important. And then the other really cool thing to do is do a, like a pin board of the type of images that you'll put in there and then a pin board of the type of images you wouldn't put in there. It really helps to kind of solidify. And then when you go through and post something, just check up against that and go, are we using, does it fit this kind of template of what we want to be and not what we don't want to be? So. That's probably my biggest tip. Do what you do and also do what you don't. It just keeps you on the right track. What do you think of clickbait? You know that's quite good for some, especially media publishing ones. Do you think that's a good tactic? I hate it. I don't know about you guys. Who likes clickbait? Anyone? No one likes clickbait. It does work. But I hate it. It's so annoying. It does actually work. We're having this really interesting discussion about like HubSpot and how they use it. Um, what I think is better, a better example, if you really want to kind of do a clickbaity type thing or drive a lot of traffic, is to do that lead, lead generation thing of um, click here to download your free um, social media tone of voice guidelines document, and then people put in their email address and then they get to download it and then you've kind of got them. I think that sort of lead generation, where you're actually adding value, is really good, rather than you'd never believe what this guy did when he found out his wife was cheating type thing. Because that one comes up all the time on my feed. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. So I get so did mainly for Instagram. Yeah. But I went. To, I did a set for a course, and she told us some statistics about if you pop twenty million hashtags, you're going to get this many more, this much more engagement. What do you think about that? Actually, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> There's tricks to hashtags actually. So hashtags are really good on Instagram because that's how people kind of collate information. What you can do, I'll, I'll actually show you later, is you can, in your phone, go into notes and you put like a dot, it's really hard to explain without a, a thing. What you want to do is keep it nice and clean, like have three hashtags, but then what you can, you can either put all the other hashtags into your first comment so that it doesn't look ugly, 
or you can do this little trick where you put a like a period, like a full stop, enter, full stop, enter, and it puts it down the page, about six of them, and then you put them all, and they don't show up. So they're there, but they don't show up in an Instagram feed, and it looks really pretty and professional. There's, there's a how-to on Start Social, NZ, on how to do that. But it's just, yeah, because you're right, they look ugly. They look awful. Anyone out with a list of 20 likes from bots or people who aren't audiences or, you know? Yeah, it's frustrating. Mm -hmm. But there are tricks to get them in there because they are worth doing. But I wouldn't again. You don't want to do something. You don't want to do, use clickbait. Um, clickbait ones. You want to use ones that are actually relevant to your business or relevant to your industry. That's the other important thing. So no dolphins. At least you're a paddleboarder. Because you don't want to continue trying to get people just to shove down their throat. You know, you've got to inform as well as do the odd sale. Is there a rule of thumb that you use to say, well, how do you get people continually engage well, rather yeah. than just... So how, like when to sell, so how much how much you want to up for yourself. Yeah. Um, well, there's the conversion fun, fun basic one of like doing something really interesting, which might be your kind of brand video or whatever. Then you've got your inform level, which might be three or four different reasons why, and then you go in for the for the sell. But I was taught at uni, we always used to say you have to talk to people seven times before you sell to them. That was our kind of golden rule. I'm finding on social media you don't need to probably – do seven times because you're actually con con in conversations with them every day. But as a general rule, if you want, want one to go with, go with that. And ladies and gentlemen, that, that unfortunately brings us to time. So um, I'm sure Wendy will be around, well she will be around straight after the presentation if there's anyone else that has any further questions for him. But if you don't mind joining me with our appreciation for Wendy this morning. Thanks guys. <laughs> And in the spirit of appreciation, a unapologetic uh, thank you to every Spark customer that's in the room. And for that to make sense, the reason we say that is the only reason that we've been able to put on 160 odd events like this is one Spark customer asked for them and a second Spark customer said that sounded a good idea. And with those two conversations, that's led to a national roadshow and 160 events across New Zealand, trying to give back useful information that people can use in their businesses tomorrow. So if you're in the room, for all those that are in the room as Spark customers, thank you. Hopefully it's meant a lot to all the others that have managed to benefit. Now they say there's no such thing as a free breakfast or, or whatever that analogy is. Uh, and similarly, there is, a, there is an ask back from you this morning. And it's a very simple ask. On the Mobi site that you came in with, down the bottom there's a field saying feedback. And in the world of iterative, learn, fail fast, iterate, what we're after is your feedback on today. How did it go? Were there things that you liked? What things could we do differently? Should we come back to Dunedin? If we came back, what sort of speakers, what sort of format should we come back with? So it would be really helpful if you could take no more than a minute to be able to help us complete that. There's also a little carrot for those that, that like carrots, which is that, that there'll be a random draw of everyone that, from everyone that completes the feedback panel for a $250 Spark thank you gift. So once again, it's our sincere thanks for, to Wendy and for everyone that's brave this morning to come out. We hope to see you back. We have an incredible night tonight with Saray Avery. Uh, Saray is one of New Zealand's premier innovators, uh, a very, very proud New Zealander, and he's been one of sort of the fellows of Spark Lab, touring throughout New Zealand, sharing his message. So if you're available to come back this evening and if there's still room or you don't mind standing, if there's not room, uh, we'd love to see you here. That starts at 6 o'clock this evening. Once again, finally, our thanks.